Hello, my name is Mr. Barr and I teach fourth and fifth grade at Dunlap Elementary in Seattle Public School. Today we're going to do a fourth and fifth grade reading lesson. I know recently you've been working on nonfiction expository texts like this one, which would teach you all about the different parts in a computer. Today we're going to change and we're going to talk about narrative fiction texts. You might think of these as stories. When we learn about these texts, it's important to remember there are different parts or elements. Some of those elements that you might remember are that there are different characters in narrative texts. You also might think about how those characters have different problems or conflicts they deal with. And you also might remember that those characters have all sorts of different things happen to them throughout the story. That's my cat. Today we're going to focus on three main elements of fiction. The first one is characters, and that's the people in the story. The next one is setting, and a story setting is where and when the story takes place. And lastly, we're going to talk about plot, and the plot of a story is what happens to the characters in the story. The book we're going to read this week is called Akiak. A Tale from the Iditarod. It is written by Robert J. Blake and illustrated by Robert J. Blake, and it's published by Puffin Books. It's important for you to know that the Iditarod is an actual sled dog race that happens every year in Alaska in early March. Teams of 14 dogs race from Anchorage all the way to a city called Nome, and it takes them almost two weeks and they travel about a thousand miles. Let's start reading. Akiak. Day one. Akiak knew it. The other dogs knew it too. Some had run it many times and others had never run it at all. But not a dog wanted to be left behind. It was Iditarod race day. 1,151 miles of wind, snow, and rugged trail lay ahead, from Anchorage to Nome. And rugged means rocky and uneven. Akiak had led the team through seven races and knew the trail better than any dog. She had brought them in fifth, third, and second, but had never won. She was 10 years old now. This was her last chance. Now, they must win now. Crack, the race was underway. One by one, 58 teams took off for Nome. Day two. Come on, old girl, show them how, Mick called. Ha! Mick worked the 16 dog team through Akiak, calling ha! when she needed the dogs to turn left, and G to go right. Mick was the musher, and the musher is the person who leads the sled dogs. Mick was the musher, but the team followed the lead dog. The team followed Akiak. Through steep climbs and dangerous descents, icy waters and confusing trails, Akiak always found the safest and fastest way. She never got lost. I want you to turn to a partner, and your partner might be a friend or family member that's with you right now. It might be a pet or a stuffed animal, or it might even be an imaginary friend you're calling on the phone. But turn to a partner and tell them what has happened in this story so far.
Day three. Akiak and Squinty, Big Boy and Flinty, Roscoe and the rest of the team pounded across the snow for three days. The dogs were ready to break out, but Mick held them back. There was a right time, but not yet. High in the Alaskan range, they caught up to Willie Ketchum in third place. It was his team that had beaten them by just one minute last year. Following the rules, Willie pulled over and allowed Mick's team to pass. That old dog will never make it, he laughed at Akiak across the biting wind. She'll be waiting for you at Nome, Mick vowed. And vowed means promised. Day 4 High in the Kuskokwim Mountains, they passed Tall Tim Brunzi's team and moved into second place. Just after Takatna, Mick's team made its move. They raced by Whistling Perry's team to take over first place. Ketchum made his move too. His team clung to Mick's like a shadow. Akiak and her team now had to break trail through deep snow. It was tough going. By the Ophir checkpoint, and a checkpoint is a place where you check in to make sure you're on the right track. By the Ophir checkpoint, Akiak was limping. The deep snow had jammed up one of her paw pads and made it sore. Mick tended to her as Ketchum raced by and took first place from them. You can't run on that paw, old girl, Mick said to her. With the day's rest, it will heal, but the team can't wait here a day. We've got to go on without you. You'll be flown home. Roscoe took Akiak's place at lead. Turn to your partner again and tell him what has happened in the story so far. Let's review the story so far by looking at the elements of fiction that we discussed at the beginning of the lesson. Characters are the people in the story. Who are the characters in this story? Well, you're probably thinking first and foremost about Akiak. The book is named after her, and she's the experienced sled dog that's leading her team for the last time. She's never won the Iditarod race. You might also be thinking about Mick. Mick is the musher for Akiak's team. Another character you might be thinking about is Ketchum. Ketchum is their rival who is trying to beat them for first place. The setting is where and when a story takes place. What's the setting of this story? Well, you might first be thinking that it takes place in Alaska somewhere between Anchorage and Nome on the Iditarod race trail. In terms of when, you might know that it happens in early March because that's when the Iditarod race happens each year. With the year, we can guess that it's somewhere close to modern times because the Iditarod race hasn't been around forever. The plot is what happens to the characters in a story. What is the plot so far in this story? Well, you might be thinking that at first, Akiak is excited to race. And when the race starts, her team is doing really well. In fact, they make it all the way to first place, but Akiak gets hurt. And she can't race anymore because she has snow stuck in her paw. 
that's where we're going to stop reading today. If you want to figure out what happens to Akiak, make sure you watch the rest of our lessons. Now it's time for independent daily reading. Make sure you find a narrative fiction book that you really want to read, and keep in mind that as you read, you need to be thinking about all the elements of fiction we discussed today. Plot, setting, and characters. I'm going to be reading this book called The Princess Who Lost Her Hair. It's an Akamba legend, and it's retold by Taloa Molel and illustrated by Charles Reasoner. See you next time, and let's get reading. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.